Greetings and welcome to a worship service of Clover Creek Church of the Brethren. This service is on video to be broadcast at our normal worship time on Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. As a body of Christ, the Clover Creek congregation holds in high regard the blessings that flow from being a united community. Corporate worship in the flesh is a large part of that. There's nothing that replaces shared worship in person. As the coronavirus response has escalated and we are called upon to socially distance ourselves, we are taking to technology to be together in worship and prayer in the spirit of the living Christ. We are hoping to give you something of the Clover Creek worship experience, even as we all respect each other with social distancing. We offer in this service a scripture reading, a meditation, and a prayer. Pastor Barb will read our scripture. The first scripture is from Exodus 17. It's the first to the seventh verse. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They, camp, they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massah and Mehedah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The second reading is from Romans, the fifth chapter, 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. Is God with us or not? I think that many people are asking that question as the world deals with learning that even with all of our knowledge, science, technology, and medicine, we learn that the order of the universe is ultimately in charge. For those of us who believe that there is more existence than what is in front of our noses, that created order of the universe is directed by the hands of God. Is God with us or not in this crisis? Questions such as this are best and most fully answered, not in the moment, but in hindsight. In the moment, we are blinded by the pain and by worry, making it difficult to reason. In the moment, how could God be with us and allow such suffering? One answer that is given for the question which asks why there is suffering is that when things get difficult, learning happens. There's learning, there's growth. There are things that we as a humanity, as a society, as individuals could and should be doing differently in our everyday lives to make life better, safer, 
and more uplifting for ourselves and for others. But what is it that we can learn beyond Kindergarten 101, Wash Your Hands? Until we can look back at this pandemic in time, until then we can learn a lesson from a people who suffered before us, people who were also God's own. Centuries before Jesus, the Hebrews were learning through their experiences in the wilderness. They were given their freedom from slavery in Egypt, and they needed a place where they could be God's people, not people of the Pharaoh. So Moses led them out from Egypt and into the wilderness toward that promised place. It was a miraculous escape, a number of plagues, the parting of a sea, everything worked to create an opportunity for a whole people to leave one life for the promises of a better life. And yet at every turn, at every hardship, the Hebrews complained, they whined, they claimed entitlement, and they pointed blame. Ultimately, the story has a happy ending. They got water. One might read from this story that the lesson learned is that the Hebrews had the power to motivate God to act. Whine, complain, and blame then is an effective way to get what you want. Perhaps we do see a lot of that going on today. In the aviation world, flight attendants pass down wisdom to new flight attendants who are just beginning the job. They give a warning to keep their social distance from pilots. The difference between pilots and a jet engine they teach their new peers is that the jet engine stops whining when you get to the gate. People can and do influence the outcome of events. But do we have power over God? I think there is a difference between having influence and having power over in relationship, God works through people, but people do not control God. Consider for a moment that maybe the Hebrews did motivate God in their complaining. My next question then is at what price? Whining to get what you want has a consequence. For the Hebrews, the cost of not learning to trust God from their experiences was that their misery extended exponentially, not only for their whining, for their complaining, but for their lack of faith. Is God with us or not? It's thought that when they reached Rephidim, they had been in the wilderness about a month and a half, right around 40 days, give or take. They ended up in the wilderness 40 years. A healthier response to suffering, to oppression, or to injustice is to pray, asking for an end to evil. To look to learn and to maintain a strong faith. I wonder if there's anything else that would be a healthy response to our suffering and to this crisis. Think about that as we move into the New Testament to hear God's continuing revelation. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul points to the peace that is had in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as our mediator, if we only have faith. Paul in the New Testament letter to the Romans exhorts that Christians boast in their suffering. In the wilderness of life, what happens is not always fair. Suffering is part of the human experience, but it is in wilderness experiences where you draw closer to God, where you learn reliance on his word, and where you learn to look for that beacon of light to get you through. Paul points to God's love 
which has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This is our living water, which sustains us in the wilderness of life. In suffering, Paul also says that the logical result of suffering moves suffering from suffering to endurance, to character, to hope. Don't give up hope. Hold on to faith. Instead of asking, is God with us or not? Maybe a better questions are, in what way is God with us? In what way is he here? And perhaps we could ask, what can we do to be agents of Christ's love, both for ourselves and for others? In suffering, rejoice in the peace with God, which is given in our Lord Jesus Christ. As we enter into the Easter season, remember Christ's suffering and his defeat of death. Never doubt that God is with us, not only in good times, but also in suffering, in death, and in pandemic. So in these challenging times, don't whine, complain, or blame, but pray for increase of faith, and ask yourself, what can I do to pour out God's love? Pastor Barr will now lead us in prayer. I would ask that you would pray with me. Lord, we ask for your presence as we go through these turbulent times. We ask for an increase in our faith. <clears throat> we ask that you enable us to find that hope that takes us from day to day in the sure knowledge that the sun is still shining and the rain still comes down and the seasons are still changing. Lord, walk with us. Strengthen us. Lord, we pray for those who are battling this pandemic. We pray for their families. We pray for the their physicians and their uh, nurses, all the attendants, Lord, be with them and strengthen them. Send your grace upon them. We also pray for those who find themselves locked into their homes and they are fearful and scared. Lord, send them peace. Give them strength and hope and the knowledge that you have not deserted them. Lord, we pray for this church. We pray for strengthening of the spirit, that we can truly be witnesses in this dark world. And all these things we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior. Amen.